All right, continuing on with Unit 4, Agriculture. Content objective for 4.2 is describe the current practices of commercial agriculture. I can statements. One, recite important elements to von Thunen's model, Thomas von Thunen's model of commercial agriculture, and then apply Thomas von Thunen's model to commercial farming in Minnesota. And then third, use von Thunen's model to differentiate commercial farming from subsistent farming. Von Thunen was a German um, geographer in 1826, and keep in mind he was uh, a um, he was a farmer who uh, was um, you know during the time of about when industrial revolution has taken a stronghold. We have people move into urban areas, and now we have less people in rural areas. So we see the birth of commercial agriculture based on the evolution of the industrial revolution. Um, and with this, farmers uh, chose crops and animals to raise based on the local markets. So when we talk about von Thunen's model in his book, Isolation State, he compared two costs, land costs versus transporting. And he said that um, the different rings of the city will be based on distance to the market. And when we look at um, the rings, they follow a concentric zone model uh, with the center being the market that's the city and where the market where um, access to goods was sold. And then also in that first ring uh, from the city or the market, you would find horticulture or market goods. So um, commercial gardening, if you will, like tomatoes, plants, um, tropical fruits. And then the second ring would be the woodlots. And the woodlots were the energy that was transported to the markets uh, to use to heat homes. And they were heavy, so it was quite expensive to transport them to the markets. Third ring would be um, pasture lands and various other crops, such as um, corn, that's uh, a crop that takes up a high arithmetic density. Uh, and then the fourth ring would be animal grazing. So um, you would have um, you know, your wheat crops, your oat crops uh, in those fields that were less dense, and then also animals, your livestock. Von Thunen's model, again, is the first commercial uh, market model. Uh, we can see that how it applies to concentric zone rings on the left, but also how it applies to uh, civilizations. As we learned, early civilizations uh, resided along rivers, and so we can see how it would work on a river as well. Does it hold true to today? Uh, yes and no. Uh, we can find ways that it applies to North America farming today, and we can also find flaws in how it does not apply. Uh, one of the ways we can see how it applies today is looking at where dairy farming is. Dairy farming historically is located near the markets. Our largest population is in the Northeast. So that definitely is a, a true fact today. And then when we look at grain, we can see that our lower arithmetic density historically has been in the West. So they have that fourth area where there's lots of land available and you can uh, graze animals, but the f fallacy is the emerging markets in Southern California where now we see a lot of textile growth with industry and that where wheat is located would not be the fourth ring. Uh, and where we see Mediterranean here in California, it's closest to just the markets in California, but the largest markets would be in the Northeast. So Mediterranean would be more like horticulture, which would be in that first ring. Uh, we can also take a look at some other um, accuracies. If we have markets here in the Northeast, um, ranching is going to be in the West. Um, and um, another fallacy we can see with this is, um, let's say, oranges, for instance. Oranges, a tropical fruit, can be located in the first ring in our largest markets, although we have emerging markets in southern Florida, then also southern parts of um, Mississippi and Louisiana. Um, most of our markets are in the northeast or southwest. So we can see how it holds true, and we can also see how it does not hold true today. How about Minnesota? Where does it hold true? Well, when we look at uh, milk, we can see that they're closest to the markets, uh, which would be in that first ring of Von Thunen's model, because it's a perishable good, and, have to, and they have to get it to the market quick. It has a short milk, sh um, milk shed. We can also see wheat. 
um, would be in that fourth ring, uh, away from major markets, low weight and transportation, carry a lot of it at low weight, high volume at low uh, weight, low transportation cost to markets. Um, we can look at corn. Uh, corn somewhat fits. It fits in that third ring, although we see southern uh, corn production is more closer to the market, second or first ring, so it's not exactly true. We can look at um, livestock. Um, livestock in some cases holds true, like in the southeastern portion of the United States where we see um, livestock grazing uh, pastures, uh, lower arithmetic density, cheap rural land, uh, then butcher shops would be located nearby to lessen the weight of the livestock as they transport it to markets. And we can see right here there's no beef production uh, in the two counties, Hennepin and Ramsey, the largest counties in the St. Paul, Minneapolis metropolitan area. Uh, we talk about subsistence commercial. This just builds on it. We know subsistence. They use hand tools. They have low technology. We know their land is intensively used, requiring a lot of hand labor, human labor. We also know that it's families, small in size. Uh, we also know that they consume the food on the land. And then we look at commercial, very large plots of land, advanced technology as we see with like a combine, and then less people as farmers. Agricultural regions again, 